video, we're going to talk about the assumptions of multiple linear regression. Now, lucky for us, the assumptions in multiple linear regression are four-fifths the same as the assumption in simple linear regression. So let's just cover those quickly, and then I'll show you the one additional assumption we have from simple linear regression in multiple linear regression. Oh, and you know what else I should say is, now you should recall that the assumptions behind a model in statistics are the statements that define what ideal data look like for this model. So ideal data for simple linear regression, which are mostly the same for multiple linear regression as well, are linearity. That is, you don't want to fit nonlinear data with a linear model. Now we've got to caution this a little bit based on our uh, understanding of transformations in the world of multiple linear regression. So really what we should suggest here is we want our fit of the line or the curve through the data to go through the center of the data. And the best way you can check this assumption is by creating the following plot. You can put your fitted values y hat on the x-axis, put your residuals on the y-axis, and then you want to make a scatter plot. And as long as your scatter plot is like a cloud of data that does not show any relationship between y hat and the residuals, then that is good. A, an example of a bad plot is if you have something like some sort of pattern through your data. And I'm going to draw it in the extreme as like an arc. If you have some sort of arc through your data like this, then that suggests your multiple linear regression model is not going through the center of the data. Because over here, it seems to be uh, over here, it seems to be fitting above all the data. And over here, it seems to be fitting above all the data. But right in the middle, it seems to be fitting below all the data. OK, so this is bad, and the one on the left is good. The next assumption of both simple linear regression and multiple linear regression is equal standard deviations. And the same plot can be used to check this. And so, in fact, the same good plot from above is the same good plot from in this assumption. So let me highlight for you then what a bad plot looks like. And any time you have some sort of megaphone going on in your data, and it doesn't matter which direction the megaphone is pointing, to the left or to the right, and I don't even care which way you think this one is pointing because it's a symmetric argument. Anytime there is a smaller variation over here, think height of the data, than there is over here, or vice versa, that is going to break the assumption of equal standard deviations. So to check both of these, we can make one plot, which puts the residuals on the y-axis and y-hat on the x-axis. You can check both linearity and equal standard deviations for both multiple or simple linear regression. The next assumption up is independence. There's no great plot to check independence of your data. You just have to think about how the data co were collected and what they mean. And what you want to ensure is that no two observations, remember that's rows, but now in the world of multiple linear regression, each row has multiple columns, multiple variables. No two rows in your data set should have any kind of inherent relationship. You don't want to get like brothers or something unless you know how to deal with that uh, statistically. There are ways in like the next set of statistics courses to deal with that. But for now, you don't want any two rows in your data set to have any kind of inherent relationship. You instead want independent data. The next assumption for both linear and uh, simple and multiple linear regression is normality. The plot to check here is to put your residuals on the x-axis and make a density plot. And if your density plot looks normal, then you're in good territory. This assumption is met. If you make a density plot of your residuals and there's any kind of skew, whether it be left or right skew, that is bad. And that will break in the assumption of normality. 
So those are our four shared assumptions of simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. The last one that we're going to add from simple linear regression to the assumptions of multiple linear regression has a fancy name. We call it multi-colinearity. Multi-colinearity. And it essentially says no two numerical explanatory variables. I'm just going to say VARs should be more related to each other. Oh, I'm running out of room. Than either is to y. So we don't want any two explanatory variables to be more related to each other than either explanatory variable is related to y. And lucky for us, R has a built-in way for us to calculate some measure that kind of indicates to us extreme multicollinearity. So here in R, I'm just going to set work us through an example to check these assumptions, most of which we've done before. Um, so really, I'll kind of move quickly through the four basic assumptions shared by simple and multiple linear regression. And then I'll show you how you can use the library CAR to check multicollinearity for, for you. If you don't already have this package installed, you should go to Tools, Install Packages, and then type out CAR and hit Enter. So we'll load both of those. I'm going to create a fitted model where I'm going to try to predict miles per gallon using weight. Plus, because we're in the world of multi, multiple linear regression, we can add a bunch more explanatory variables to our model. So if we pull up the help file from the dataset cars, I'm going to pick some other numerical explanatory variables. I'm going to pick rear axle ratio because that one sounds good to me. You can look up what that is if you need to, but for now it's just another explanatory variable that I think will help explain miles per gallon. And let's say horsepower. So the faster your car is essentially, then the worse gas mileage you're getting. That's the model I'm making right here. Now we need to calculate the residuals. I'm going to recommend the function R standard called on the object fit. We need to calculate y hat. I'm going to recommend the function fitted called on the object fit. We want to put both of these into a data frame so that we can make plots from them. The residuals is equal to the vector r that we just calculated, and y hat is equal to y hat, which is some obnoxious naming, but it'll work out. Now we'll go ggplot to use the data frame df that we just created. In the aesthetic, let's check normality first. We'll put the residuals and then make a density plot. So it looks like we have kind of a long right tail from these residuals. So it's a little bit right skewed going on here, not terribly normal. That's like kind of right on the borderline because the skew isn't extreme. It's not like the skew is going off to 10 or something to a new order of magnitude, but it also doesn't look great. Let's make our second plot where we put y hat on the x-axis and the residuals on the y-axis and then make a scatter plot. Oh, and look what we have here. This assumption is not great. So this is telling us our assumption of normality is broken because of this big kind of U-shape in the data here. This big U-shape is indicating to us a broken assumption of normality. But um, the equal standard deviations assumption is not that bad because kind of the height of the data here is kind of the height of the data here and is kind of the height of the data here. So really the issue is we have a model that's not going through the center of our data set. Now before we move on to see if we can correct that assumption, let's just check. So from the library car, there is a function named VIF. And of course you can do question mark VIF and read all about variance inflation factors. They're probably not going to be super helpful because I'm not diving into the math behind these things, but this is the method you should use to check multicollinearity. 
And what you want is none of these numbers called variance inflation factors should be greater than 10. If any number is greater than 10, you should essentially throw out that variable from your model because it appears to be more related with the other variables than it is related with the response variable miles per gallon. In this case, because all of these numbers are less than 10, this checks out pretty well. So these variables meet, appropriately meet the assumption of multicollinearity. So the only assumption that seemed to be broken was, oh, sorry, was this one, which is telling us that the linearity of our model is not seeming to fit the data well. But I'm going to guess from our previous work with this data set that weight is somehow quadratically related to miles per gallon. Now, the best part about the uh, way I've set up these assumptions and the way we check them in R is, look, I can just go modify my fitted model. And then all of my plots really kind of follow the same code. So there still appears to be some slight right skew that our modified model is not capturing. But despite these two potential, I don't know, these two don't seem to be doing what the rest of the data are doing, but the rest of the data really don't show any kind of systematic pattern through our data, which is suggesting that this modified model meets the assumption of linearity much better. So I'm going to say this model is better than the last model because our assumption of linearity has improved, even though we still have some right skew in the residuals. I'm not terribly worried about some small right skew like this, but I am very happy that we've fixed our assumption of linearity with this highlighted modification to our model here. So the last thing we should check is multicollinearity. And because we added some fancy transformation to our model, the uh, variance inflation factors have to be generalized a little bit. So the generalized variance inflation factor is like a new calculation, but really who cares? As long as none of this last column of numbers is above 10, then everything for multicollinearity checks out as it does here. If, imagine this number was above 10, then you'd have to get rid of this entire term from your model. Okay, so here are, uh, here are our uh, ways to check the assumptions of multiple linear regression. We can check normality with this plot. We check linearity and equal standard deviation with this one plot. And then we check multicollinearity here. The only really way to check the assumption of independence is to think about your data set. And in this case, we have a data set of cars. Now I'm going to venture that this particular Mazda car and this particular Mazda car, although they're made by the same manufacturer, it's not like if one of those Mazdas got worse gas mileage, the other one would necessarily get worse gas mileage. Those two cars are totally independent. There's nothing related to those two cars, except they're the same manufacturer. But the manufacturer isn't the driving factor here. What we think the driving factor to miles per gallon is weight, um, the rear axle ratio, and horsepower. So here is the way I recommend for you all to check um, the assumptions of multiple linear regression these are the things you should ensure fit before you make any decisive conclusions from your model.